Hi, I'm Daz. Uh, today I have a pair of Kodar uh, PR30 pre selectors. Um, these have been sitting in the box with my CR66. They're a pre selector um, basically for shortwave bands um, to be used with any receiver, not just the CR66. Um, the idea is they're a preamp and a tuned circuit. They help to eliminate um, images when you've got a low IF, like in the uh, case of the CR66, which is um, 455. So, um, or around 455. So, just looking at them, um, the two. I've got two different ones here, but someone's obviously put a power light in this one. So, there's just a band select switch at the front, a tuning dial. It's just marked in 0 to 100 and again on off control. Uh, this is the model that uh, comes with an internal power supply. Um, looking around the back, there's, yeah, you can see that clearly. It's an output socket, uh, there's an auxiliary power socket, an aerial socket, and a switch for balanced and unbalanced. And I think if we look at the other one, we'll find out it's, yeah more or less the same even though this is a slightly different looking one this one's very nicely marked that for us this one's got the power plug, that's good, you can stick your fingers on the HT <laughs> um, right let's get the uh, lid off in this case of this one it won't take much okay so I've got the lid off the uh, first unit what can we see? Well. Aerial input goes into the select switch, and here's the set of input coils which are wound on sort of four supports. Um, here's the tuning capacitor uh, EF183 as the amplifier, and a simple power supply formed of a looks like a silicon diode, and uh, just a bit of resistive smoothing. So, here's the gain control. And uh, yes, you can see the switch just earths one side of the input. So that's that one. Let's have a look at the other one. Now this one is a bit different. Um, now on this one, we've got some um, three input transformers and an additional one here. Now I wonder if that's the RF choke because yeah I think it is. There is a RF choke in the anode or plate depending on what you want to call it. And that one is a, a different design but uh, it's, yeah this one looks it might be a bit newer. So these high, I, they look like the high Q um, transformers that are in the CR66. Yeah. They do. Q Q O Max or what was it? Q O Max. Let's see if I can do this. Come on camera. There we go. So there's the transformers used on this one. And uh, again an EF183. It's one of those um valves, high gain valves with the special uh grid on them. Uh, frame grid isn't it? And there's the uh, transformer again slightly different capacitors. I wonder if there's any date on these. These have got RS on them so they might have already been replaced or maybe they used RS stuff when they made it. But uh, yes. There we go. So the question is, which one am I going to repair? I'm going to repair both of them. I must admit, um, that one looks a little tatty. I think that's been well used. Looking at the front panel. Uh, yes, right. Well, what I think is check the electrolytics. Um, Possibly replace the diode because I'm not sure I, re I trust 1960s 
di uh, diodes. Ooh, it's in there like a little epoxy pack. Uh, have a look. Ooh, oh yes, it's even got the symbol on it. There we go. Yeah, that's good. And this one, ah oh, yes, one of these metal packages. Right, okay. So, a quick look round how this works. Nice book this. A friend gifted me that. <laughs> nice data book, nice up, and up to date. So looking at the circuit, oh, yes, you can see it, good, good. So it's just basically an input uh, transformer and tune circuit. Pentode's just, it's a pentode, the EF183, so that's just basically got a high frequency choke in the anode. There's a couple of resistors either side. Um, a second grid, screen grid's fed by a variable resistor, so you can turn the gain up and down. Output taken via a capacitor. A cathode resistor. The reason I've got asterisks is some of them have got different capacitors. One of them hasn't got that resistor, and one's got different resistors, so it's just me just making a note. So that looks fairly simple, really, doesn't it? I suppose it reminds you, if you think about it, with the variable resistor here and the input here, it reminds you of a sort of dual, dual uh, input FET, doesn't it, really? That sort of thing you'd find in a, a bit more modern equipment. But, uh, yeah, OK, so... I think what I'm going to do is start changing some components out and then perhaps we'll uh, power it up and see how well it resonates. I think I'll do this one first. thought I'd try out my new toy. It looks like the uh, these red cylinder capacitors are okay. It's saying over a giga ohm, so perhaps that doesn't need changing. Hmm. I'm wondering if you can use this toy to reform capacitors. About one meg. Well, that's not that bad for an electrolytic, is it? It's gradually going down. Mind you, you've only got it on 100 volts. Let's get a bit more vicious. 250. Hmm. Not leaky then, don't know what the capacitance is like though, whether that's intolerance, but uh, I suppose I can test that afterwards. Yeah. Well, it isn't hideously leaking, is it? Doesn't like working up that way. Right. Oh, okay. Hmm. Nothing wrong with them, really, is there? Okay. Well, I think I get the award for the most complicated adapter array to get from Ballin Lee to a couple of terminals. I'm going to stick 5k on the output of this, and then I'm going to connect it to the signal generator and uh, scope, and just see if the uh, the tuned circuits are what you expect, or whether they're way, way out and you can't get the range, but uh, there we go. bit alarmed about the HT in this, but I'm just going to turn it on. Ooh, 350, that's quite high. Um, bottom reading is the cathode resistor on the valve. Um, there's 160 ohms in there. I've currently got the gain control fully down. I'm just waiting for the valve to warm up. Okay, it's got about 0.2 volts, so I turn it up. You see the current going up. So, yeah, you can see the current through the valve increasing. And as it does, the HT is dropping off. It was a bit all over the place. This is a replacement pot and it doesn't look that brilliant. Uh, there we 
Tyco. I worked that out to be about 20 milliamp through the valve and it says 12 milliamp so it's pretty hard run. The HT is 260 so a little bit harsh on the valve I would say. But uh, maybe we can put a little bit of extra load on the HT just to reduce that a little bit. Perhaps increase the resistor between the two smoothing capacitors. I suspect that uh, I do suspect that the, uh, the voltage is a little bit higher because it is designed to have an extra load on if you want. So maybe that's why it's wandering up a little bit on the high side. Well, we were looking at the pot earlier, and we wondered wondered why it was a bit intermittent. Yeah, can you see the spark? Ooh. Ooh. And smoke as well. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, screen voltage is up to 150 volts. I think I'm going to have to have a, bit, have a bit more think about this. Oh, that's not good, is it? I've been doing a little bit of maths and... Uh, this is how much I reckon the valve was dissipating and it does say 2.5 watts maximum so with an HT of about 210 I reckon we come down to about 13 it looks a little higher than that but what I've done is I've changed the series resistance the smoothing resistance from 2k to 4.7k and now things are a little bit more sensible because that valve was getting damn hot so We've now got a um, see a what uh, the white coloured uh, wire wound resistor on there now, so that's uh, give me a little bit more sensible results. But I think I need to still look at this pot because I don't think it's very very happy about the situation. Um, but at least the screen grid volt, which is around 100 now when it's turned up, rather than 150. Hmm. Um, I don't understand this. I wonder if there's a fault with the transform, but maybe they were like this. Uh, maybe if you had auxiliary stuff on the power supply, it would come down. But uh, I'm going to give the pot a clean and see if it uh, stops sparking. Well, it's hardly surprising this pot's getting a bit grumpy. Um, if you look at the voltmeter here, I don't know if you can see, you should be able to see it in HD. Um, just as I crack the pot off the end, that's, yeah, 60 volts across it. It's no wonder there's a bit of smoke coming from it. So you've got, you know, 60 odd volts on the tiniest bit of track at the end. So, yeah, that, that's not good how this is implemented. Not good at all. Okay, so stage two. What I've done is so I've uh, found a spare valve. I just wanted to try that in just to see if I could see any difference in the way it functions and the answer is basically no. So, what I've basically done, and you can just see, move this carefully, I've uh, borrowed the pot out of the other one and removed the replacement pot. I think the main problem is, it's not going to focus on this is it, uh, I think the main problem is, is this has got a track half the size so it just hasn't got the dissipation to uh, do the job. So I need to find another 500k for the other one but anyway at least now there's no smoke coming out, out of it when I turn it up now, so no sparks, nothing. So that's good. Right, so at last I'm ready to stick some RF in this device. Okay, um, got the scope set up. Um, there's about a 50 millivolt peak to peak signal going in, so I'm going to switch on at minimum gain. I'll just wait for the valve to warm up. Shouldn't take long considering how much is dissipating. Oh, there we go. Let's turn it up a little bit. 
there we go. Now that's at zero. Let's just bring it up. Are we going to resonate? Yes, we are. There we go. There is a resonance. But it's not as so sharp as I would have thought. But it's been sharper than that. That's, I've got a 2 megahertz signal in and we seem to be peaking around about 50% okay so this goes down to 1.5 let's pop 1.5 in 1.5 megahertz no, other way maybe uh, yep yeah. Now it's just about peaking at 90%. Oh, that's good. Something's happening. It's not quite a sharp peak as I'd expect. So, what sort of output can I get? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, that's fairly. Okay. Maybe it becomes sharper if you've got a higher output. I doubt it though. Oh, I think the difference is about the same. That's a nice output there now. Looks quite clean too. Let's get a little bit more. Right. And there we go. So that's one and a half megs, and I can peak that quite easily. Right. Uh, what's the top end of this? Right, 4.2, so I'm going to try 4 megs. seems a little sharper at the higher end which is beneficial because that's when you're going to start having image problems so it looks quite good so what yeah I can go down to virtually nothing although we are just looking at an oscilloscope I wasn't too keen to connect my spectrum analyzer up to this I can't think why <laughs> uh, but I've got a, a 5.6k resistor on the output. I thought that wasn't far wrong from perhaps what you'd see looking at the input on a high impedance radio. So yeah, that's quite good. Okay, let's try another range. Uh, 4.2 to 11. So I'll now put it on 5 megs. Okay. Sweep it. Here we go. So it looks like the low range appears at the higher number, that's interesting. No problem, that's 70% on the dial. Yeah, nice peak. It's beginning to get sharper, I guess it will as it's getting higher frequency. Okay, and the top of the range, oh, 11.5 megs, so I'll stick 11 in. high output though but it's peaking okay 32 11.5 right let's try 12 megahertz But it's certainly falling. That's on absolute maximum gain. Let's try it at say 25 megs. 25 megs. Turn the sensitivity up. It's Obviously not as high gain on the higher bands. But nevertheless it still works. Quite well. Good. Okay, so we've now got a working pre-selector which doesn't emit smoke. That's cool. Well, I thought I'd see how this pre-selector works, so 
what I've done is I've arranged two signal generators. This is the second one. You can clearly hear the one kilohertz tone. That is at the twice the IF. Although I must admit, I think the uh, the IF's drifting a bit. As you can hear, you can hear it changing, but. Now the question is, if I put the pre-selector in, will it stop me from hearing the second generator? Okay, I'll switch the connections. Ooh. Fair bit of gain there. Is it peaking though? I'm using a 4 megahertz signal. Okay. Wow, well, there is a bit of gain in there, isn't there? Wow. Okay. Right, let's turn the other generator on. Well, not as much improvement as I'd hoped. Okay. Uh, I might well repeat the experiment then at a higher frequency. It certainly improves the gain, but I can still hear the second channel interference. Right, let's try a higher frequency. Okay. What I've done is I've switched ranges and I'm trying the higher range and actually That's actually more effective. Can't actually hear the uh, second generator at all now, that's quite good. Okay, I've reset it up at 15 megs. The interference signal is 15.910. Okay, that's good. Let's put the pre-selector in. There's no doubt that having this in improves the sensitivity, is it? Good grief. Bearing in mind there's only four active valves in this set, so having an extra one at the front can't do any harm, I don't think. Okay, let's just see. Keeps it out. Right, I'll turn the other generator on. Well, I can barely hear the other generator now, so. Yeah, I'd say that's um, certainly improving the selectivity, most definitely. Just a slight trace of it. Oh, right, okay, so yeah, pre selector. The only thing is it must be a nightmare trying to adjust two, two sets of uh, adjustments when you're tuning though. Know? That's the only thing I think would drive me slightly crazy. A bit like going back to the early days sort of TRFs where you had a tuner for each gang stage I guess. <laughs> but there we go. Well that's working but certainly adds some gain to this and volume one heck of a lot.
Okay, I think that's that tested. Thanks for watching.